because spirituality is a journey into God. How you can achieve it? Simply, I can tell you, as Mr. Islam, Islam has repeatedly emphasized the role of prayer in, so, uh, in this book as well and elsewhere. So, the best thing is to do what I just told the earlier questioner. You speak honestly to God and say, having learned of you, having known what you are, I want to worship you and you alone. When you do that, the next verse will tell you you can't without the help of Allah. So you add, help me please, help me God, to fulfill the requirements of worship. Having done that, another verse will follow. Ehdina surat al Guide us to the path the straight path. And when you reach there, immediately the purpose of your question will be resolved so clearly. Guide us to the, to the, right, the, the right path. What is the right path? A what? Sirat al Anamta Alayhim. The path of those on whom you have bestowed favors earlier. Not of those who were also granted that path, but they deviated from it, it and were the object of wrath. So this is how you reach spiritual levels, all spiritual levels, because Siratul Lazina Anam Tala means the path of those upon whom you have bestowed spiritual favors. And Anam means spiritual favors. These spiritual favors have been clearly defined and enumerated in another verse of Surah uh, Nisa, which says, Minan Nabiyina wa Siddiqina wa Shahadai wa Salihin. The people who are the recipients of favors of Allah are classified into four categories. The first, prophets of Allah. The second, the righteous who are so righteous that Allah calls them to be righteous. And the third, martyrs in the path of Allah. And the fourth, ordinary, righteous people who are good and their uh, way of life shuns evil and they try to practice goodness. The ordinary run of the true Muslims. These are the four stages of Inam. So they have been mentioned in Surah Fatiha, which you recite in every prayer. All spiritual progress can be reached to the very maximum because there is nothing beyond Nabuvat, being Prophet of Allah. All spiritual progress can be reached through the journey in Surah Fatiha, through Surah Fatiha. All right? Okay, just one quick follow-up question, please. Okay, yes. Of the communities that we come from, from all over the country, has had the opportunity to see Muslims from various sects, not just Ahmadi, Sunni, Nation of Islam, etc. Of As we go out and address the communities based on the philosophies of the teachings of Islam, of how do we distinguish ourselves from the other Muslim communities? It is with the help of the same verse which I just recited, you see that this verse informs us that if you truly obey Allah and Hazrat Muhammad Rasulullah then you will be the only people who will be counted among those who are recipients of Allah's favors. This is the main, the, the beginning of the verse. Whoever obeys Allah and Ar Rasul Muhammad Rasulullah, it will be these alone who will be the receipt, who will be counted among those who receive favors of Allah. What favors of Allah? Minan Nabiyina. They will be counted among 
the prophets, among Siddiq, among Shaheed, among Swale. The major difference between us and them is that they believe that not even a subordinate prophet in Islam who is absolutely under the total command of the Quran and the Muhammad, Muhammad Rasulullah can ever come. So begin with this verse. Show them. You say something else. The Holy Quran tells me something else. It says all Inam is now confined to the obedience of Allah and Muhammad Rasulullah. And all the Inams which are mentioned in general are mentioned in detail in the same verse. Minan Nabi Jina. The first is that of Nabuwat, prophethood. So if it had been closed forever, what would be the meaning of this verse? So the debate can begin with this. And what follows? There you can be helped by the study of MDA literature on these uh, controversial issues. And you can also listen to my videos or cassettes in which I have explained these aspects from every angle and I hope they will be relayed here on your and television system in due course. We are only waiting for people to buy their decoders and get settled and the decoder system to start working properly. Once it is done, then we propose to replay all my question answer sessions with errors, with English speaking, with the German speaking, with Dutch speaking and so on and so forth as a series right from the beginning for the benefit of American people. And we'll do it at a time when you generally listen to such programs or view such programs. So inshallah if you find time for that you will get answers to all the possible questions which may agitate your mind. Inshallah. Thank you. Thank you also. Yes. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Irfan al-Adeen. Irfan? Irfan al Of course I know Irfan. Huzur, I have just uh, two questions that are very related. Just two? Just two. And uh, the so first one is? is uh, the first one is in parasitology class, we've had some discussions about the eating of pork, and I tried to use some of the new arguments I learned from MTA, as well as Hazrat Masim Salam's teaching that the physical, moral, and spiritual worlds are connected. I wanted to know, is there any evidence, one from the Holy Quran, and two from science? that what you eat uh, physically is going to affect what uh, your spiritual state in the sense that those people uh, who eat a lot of meat should be aggressive and those who eat only vegetables uh, may be more timid. Um, is <coughs> now the question can be answered in, in, in detail consuming so much time which we do not have. But I know you're a well-educated and intelligent boy. Forgive me if you don't like the term boy applicable to you. <laughs> you see? Perhaps guy would be a better substitute. <laughs> but anyway, my answer is that the Holy Quran has guided us in principles. And the most important thing to be noted about the diet of man is that God has created everything for the service of man. And among the animals which he has created, he has also mentioned their usage as uh, flesh, the consumption of their flesh by humans. And also vegetations are mentioned, vegetable, uh, vegetables and fruits etc. are mentioned to serve the same cause. Now having done that, one thing becomes clear that some animals were specifically created for the, for the purpose of consumption of their meat. And it's not forbidden, number one. It must have some advantages or Allah would not do that. Secondly, if you go to back to the history of evolution, you will learn that the evolution has pro produced two types of animals those are which are vegetarian and those which are carnivorous. And in man, all the qualities of animals spread throughout the animal kingdom 
are combined.